Welcome to our lecture online. Now here's an interesting example. Again, we're trying to figure out if they are dependent events, independent events, mutually exclusive events. Well, the example here, we're tossing two dies. The probability of A is equal to the probability that die 1 equals a 4, and the probability of B is equal to the probability that the sum of the two dies equals 10. Now they can happen at the same time because if one die is a 4, then all the other die needs to be is a 6 in order to get a 10. So they are what we call not mutually exclusive. They can happen at the same time. So what is the probability of event A and B occurring at the same time? Now typically you would think, well that's equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. But is that indeed the case? So let's say, you would say, is that equal to the probability of A times the probability of B? And so that's the question. Now, let's take a look at that. Notice that the probability of A is equal to 1 out of 6, because there's only one chance in 6 that die 1 will equal a 4. Now, the probability of B being equal to or that the sum of the two dies equals 10, well that's 3 out of 36 because there's three different ways in which that can happen. We can have a 4 and a 6, we can have a 5 and a 5, and we can have a 6 and a 4. So there's three different ways out of 36 possible combinations with two dies, which is 3 out of 36, which is 1 12th. So now, if we were to multiply 1 6th times 1 12th, we would get 172. And there aren't 72 combinations in which you can throw two dies. So if, there, if the probability of A and B is not equal to the product, that means they cannot be independent events. They must be dependent events. That means that the outcome of one must affect the outcome of the other. And that's true. Once we know the outcome of A, then we have a different probability for the outcome of B. For example, let's say that the probability of A or the event A is such that we get a zero or not a zero, that's not possible. Let's say we get a one on the first die, then there's no possible way we can get, we can get 10 for the, other, for the sum of the two dies and therefore the probability of B drops to zero. But once we know that, that die one is either a four or five or a six, we know that there's then a one out of six chance that the sum of the two will be a 10, and therefore the probability of B will go to 1, 6. So, if die 1 equals 4, then the probability of B goes to 1, 6. And then we can say that the probability of A and B happening at the same time will be equal to 1, 6 times 1, 6, which is equal to 1 out of 36. So, in other words, if a happens, to be a happens to be a 4, then there's one chance out of 6 that B will be a 6, and therefore together the sum will be 10, and so that means that the probability of A and probability of, v of B happening at the same time is 1 out of 36. There's only one combination where both can be fulfilling, can have the outcome to fulfill the probability of A and the probability of B. In other words, if the first die is a 4 and the second die is a 6, then they're both a 4 for the first die and a sum of 10 for both dies. So there's 1 out of 36 chances that you'll have both A and B occurring at the same time. So notice we cannot individually take the probability of A and the prob probability of B and multiply them together and expect that will be then the probability of both events occurring at the same time. So we can see that this is not the case. What we have to do instead is toss the first die, see what the outcome of the first die is. If the first die is equal to 4, then there's a 1 in 6 chance that the second die will be a 6, and therefore the total probability of both events occurring is 1 out of 36. If the first die, for example, is a 5, again, there'll be 1 out of 36 chances that both will be a 10. If the die 1 is a 6, then again, there's a 1 in 36 chance that both of them will be 10. But if die 1 is 3 or less, then there's no chance that both of them can be a 10. So you can see that the probability of B definitely depends completely on the outcome of A. And that is how it's done.